And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! It's time! Uh, yes, Bunny, my friend, who is more than brother to me, I embrace thee. You're my brother, Bunny. Uh, not by blood. You're my brother by film. And yes. film is stronger than blood. You don't do an hours long, hours long podcast for eight years without really getting to know a person. And I just want to say that I uh, love you and I uh, appreciate you, Bunny. You're awesome. Thank you. Anywho, I digress. That's going to be my new catchphrase because I digress a lot. Anywho, I digress. It is time. Once again, for all of us here at the Pope Fun Film Podcast to hot stepper our way into the second half of our big shoe. And it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new no drip maximum strength 12 hour relief. Do not use if printed neck band is broken or missing. Movie of the week. And this week, we continue our celebration of Buntober, Bunny's birth month, by giving him the reins of the podcast for a few weeks. And uh, my wife, my amazing wife, Natasha, uh, stood next to me and watched a bit of the movie. And she's like, the fuck is this? And I'm like, it's what happens in October. <laughs> What happens in October is Yahtzee. We're going to roll the dice, and whatever happens, happens. So this episode, we get our Cronenberg on with our most Cronenberg film to date, the notorious 2022 David Cronenberg sci-fi body horror art house sci-fi mess. Yeah. Crimes of the Future! And first off, Bunny, uh, big news in the world of, of Hollywood. Oh, look at this. I got a, I got a bulletin. You're not going to believe it. Martin Scorsese's next film is going to be called Goodfellas. Ah. Oh. But it's going to star Dane Cook mm -hmm. and Christina Applegate. And it'll be about a baby duck who gets his head stuck in a stewed tomato. Okay. So that's exciting. Good fellows. Yes. Uh, Steven Spielberg just announced that his next film is is called THX 1138, but it's actually it's actually about Crimea. Yes. It's about the Crimean War and the invention of post-it notes. Really, really strange. Fucking it really pisses me off that this effing movie is called Crimes of the Future. That really upsets me. It upsets me. That it's like, I'm going to use this movie again. And then you hear like reviewers, oh, who are creaming in their jeans over this movie. You see all these critics be like, oh, obviously, he, although not. The, although these films are not related, they obviously share many of the same sensibilities and might even take part in the same universe. I, don't make excuses. Yeah. You are Cronenberg. so stretching. Yeah. I saw a review because... How can uh, they exist I, in the same universe when there are women in one and no women in the other? I just think that David Cronenberg is one of those people now that just uh, reviewers will cream over. Period. Yes. Doesn't matter what he did. That poster, I'm staring at that poster right now. Yeah. He's got resting Woody Harrelson face, and I've never noticed it before. <laughs> but he has really got resting Woody. If he smiled just now and you saw some really bad teeth, I'd be, holy shit. Are you going to train me to be in the Hunger Games? Are you going to go work at Cheers? <laughs> uh, critics 
will just love, I think, any David Cronenberg movie. I saw some review. I saw some review. I read a lot of reviews. I saw a review that said, Kristen Stewart adding some much needed levity as the comedy relief of the film. What film were you watching? Yeah. Because you were not watching Crimes of the Future. I I was interested in her quirky performance, but I didn't find comedy. Maybe you got confused and you thought that the new Charlie's Angels reboot was uh, David Cronenberg's Charlie's Angels, but no, because she was very funny as the comedy relief in, in that film. Uh, I watched that in February. <laughs> yeah. I watched that just in time for Women's History Month. Great movie for Women's History Month. You know, you go girls. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, again, that that's stretching. I, the Rotten Tomatoes says it best. The critic score for Crimes of the Future is 80%. The audience score... 50 percent yeah that says so much about the state of movie reviewing that critics are tripping over themselves to like fillet david cronenberg but normal people i feel a lot of people like there's a freaking pandemic it's still happening despite what our elderly president says it's still happening and people are still dying. And just because you're not reporting on the deaths that are happening doesn't mean that the deaths aren't happening. People are still dying from this pandemic. And now we've got this monkeypox thing going on. And why is every other article about the monkeypox just a close up picture that makes me want to vomit? Use a different picture. <laughs> Sick of seeing monkeypox photos. So, so. You know what I don't want to see? Depressing body horror. <laughs> Call me crazy. I want to be entertained. So I didn't like this film. Yeah. I, 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 I when we were uh, messaging about it, it, it just came to me freely. I hadn't written it down on my notes or anything, but, uh, yeah, I would much rather watch 1970s uh, college student foot fetish, the narrated silent film, yeah. again, than have to try and make sense of whatever this is. Because I'll tell you one thing. This movie sounds great. On paper, the plot's amazing. <laughs> Theoretically, this is a good movie because on paper, oh, man, it's the future and people aren't feeling pain anymore and people are evolving and now they can grow new organs. And some people use that as art and get them uh, surgically removed. And it's like science and surgery is the new sex. And uh, oh, but there are some people who are trying to, you know, uh, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants is there eating plastic. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is interesting. This is a this is good. But then you watch the film, and it's like, oh, okay, this 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 is a great movie to read about. But I, I just did not care for it at all, and yeah. it made me appreciate last week more because at least last week was just so bizarre that it's like, ooh, this is interesting. It got to the point where I was hoping for body horror just to sort of like wake me up. <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh, fucking one person speaking in an accent, another person speaking in a completely different a accent. Oh, look, here's a ninth accent, and here's another drab room we're in. Can we start cutting someone up? I'm getting real bored over here. <laughs> and then, oh, look at that. We're playing with Aragon's uh, intestines. Okay, well, at least I'm paying attention. Yes. But it, like I, I, I just didn't care at all. 
This is the latest film. This came out this year. This is new. Yes. Latest film from Davy and Goliath Cronenberg. Fun fact about David Cronenberg, he invented Rick Rolling. He was the first person to say, here is a preview for my new movie. I think you'll like it. Let me press play. We're no strangers to love. Yes, I just invented this. It's called Rick Rolling. I don't know what Cronenberg sounds like, but I'm assuming <laughs> he has sort of like a snooty art accent of, yes, well, theoretically, my films have always been about man's grasping of its own consciousness. That's how I assume he sounds. Um, I I found it interesting. I found I found a lot of the ideas being explored to be interesting. We there is no good logical way for us to get there. Yeah, but I I kind of I I was kind of interested seeing this strange different world, not based in reality at all. And it's like, hey, it's set in the future. You know why? Because they keep telling us and not showing us. Yeah. The entire film looks like it was filmed at Zion right after the orgy. <laughs> <laughs> that it's like, we're in Zion, the last <laughs> place of actual humans. Now let's start fucking. And then once they're done, it's like, okay, let's go back to our caves and go to sleep. Maybe have some more sex. Oh, don't bother to clean up. David Cronenberg's going to come in here and just film. Yeah. And that's where the setting of this was. The, this movie was set in the set, second Matrix movie. And it was just like, I, I, I will agree with you that I like the concept and the world building. I was interested in that. I was interested in the mythology that they were building and yeah. the future. And I, it, I, I, I thought all of that was fascinating, but the way that they, they had good ideas, and they should put it on screen in the most boring way imaginable. That I just mm. could not care about at all. Yeah, no, I, I, I yeah, I, it was kind of twisted, and I liked it for its twistedness. <coughs> <coughs> Vigo Mortensen was definitely doing like a like a Phantom of the Opera kind of a thing going on there. I I thought that it, in my mind I tried to make the movie more exciting and and the way that I did that was he's dressing like Dark Man and talking like Batman. Yeah. So it's like a Dark Man Batman hybrid. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. You can't just say people are growing their own organs and go, uh, evolution. Yeah, evolution doesn't yeah. work like that. Yeah. It did in that. Certainly did in that, but that's not real. Yeah, this is this is how I saw the film. It felt like Davy Cronenberg was just trying real hard to be Cronenbergian. Yeah. I, three minutes into this film, you get a half-naked boy eating a trash can on a dirty bathroom floor. And a minute later, his mom kills him. We get it. You're shocking. Yeah. Ooh, you can dial it back. We're already watching the film. I, I, at, at one point, Cronenberg just became like a verb. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I, I imagine that's got to be pressure. Like, like, like literally... Cronenberg is a way to describe things in Rick and Morty. Yes. Hey, Cronenberg Morty. It's me, Cronenberg Rick. And so his name well, is it's just like, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like household Tarantino in the feet. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's like, like oh, okay, I got this... this I got this rep for, for having feet in my movie. Now I gotta put in a whole lot more feet. Yeah, I felt like th like that's exactly what Cronenberg was doing here. And it's like, oh, shit. I felt like this is a cinematic version of that old Onion article. Marilyn Manson now going door to door to try and shock people. Yes. Yes. And it's like, yeah, that's this film. 
And Cronenberg is like, yeah, I'm the body horror guy, so how can I make this more squishy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's how I felt that this was. Uh, so in the film, so this film is set in the future. And in the future, people don't really feel experience physical pain anymore and it i i looked into it i did a lot of reading to figure out why it was that people didn't feel pain anymore and it's there's a whole backstory to it which is fascinating so let me let me explain it to you bunny this is how see zydrate comes in a little glass vial ah and the little glass vial goes into the gun like a battery yeah and the like zydrate battery? gun yeah, and the zydrate gun goes somewhere against your anatomy, and when the gun goes off, it sparks, and you're ready for surgery. Surgery. Yes. So, and honestly, this is weird, but uh, in 1995, 94? I think it was 95. Uh, David Bowie released a concept album, which he wanted to be one part of a cycle he wanted to do like this massive series of concept albums and he released one in 1995 and he toured with it and i saw him on tour he toured with nine inch nails and he played mostly new stuff and not a lot of his old stuff and people got really pissed off and uh the album didn't sell well so he never finished his series but he did release one concept album in 1995. The concept album was uh, called, it, it was called Outside. And basically, here's the plot of the album. There are art crimes. And so there, there's murder where you're killing someone. And then there's mutilation for the sake of public consumption. Okay. And David Bowie plays Nathan Adler, who is an art crime detective, and he is the one who gets to decide, was this a crime or was this beautiful art? Okay. And uh, he's investigating a 14-year-old who was murdered, and uh, the, the lead single from the album was the the Heart's Filthy Lesson. That was a song of his. It was used in the movie uh, Seven. And it's from his character's point of view as he is going to the scene of a of a murder to decide whether or not it's art or not. And I I felt like a a bit of Crimes of the Future ripped a, a little bit off of David Bowie is all I'm saying. I, I felt like Someone got really high and listened to that David Bowie album and said, what if we make this better? And it, it, it's a really good uh, concept album and I really like it. But OK, so Bonnie, um, I feel really bad for saying this. Is there any way that you can explain the plot of this movie? Not in full, because again, there are those, there are just gaping holes yeah. in the plots to get to the idea, but apparently they can't feel pain anymore, uh, and some people, I guess, can grow their own organs. Yeah. And they were performance artists. Yes. At least Vigo Mortensen and his partner? Side piece? Yeah, I mean, I didn't get like they really had any kind of relationship outside of the performance art. I felt that they had a relationship in the sense that surgery is the new sex, so they were kind of doing it. Yeah. Even though they never really did it. Yeah. They were doing it because this is the guy who made Crash. Yeah. Uh, I love James Spader. There, I said it. 
freaking love that man. <laughs> but I, but not enough that I'll actually watch the blacklist. Okay. Or the last season of The Office. Ugh. That was cool. I'll never watch that again. <laughs> uh, so um, Vico Mortensen grows his own organs. Like you do. New organs, which you then can go get registered at the organ registry place. The organ DMV. Yeah. Basically. And then they would tattoo the organ, kind of registering it, which is a whole idea and concept, again, which is, like, interesting, but it doesn't go anywhere. Nope. Not you know? at all. It does at the end, because they're like, we're going to autopsy a boy, and wait, all of the boy is tattooed. Yeah. And I was trying to explain it to my wife, but it's like there's no way to explain the plot of this film without sounding like a complete crazy person. But if he, but if he, okay, well, we're kind of getting ahead of this. So that's yeah. basically the plot. He grows new organs, and then they do a performance art piece where they do a live operation and remove the organ, and there's an audience kind of. Yeah. It's an audience almost in a in a peep show kind of way. Yeah. You know, it's it's like not a lot of people and it's got a very just grimy feel about it. Yeah, like eight millimeter. Yeah, like while they're taking pictures with their camera with their phones and shit like that of the surgery and ooh, here's an organ we've never seen any before. Brilliant, bravo, bravo. Yeah, and it's like everyone knows him. Everyone loves him because he's such a major uh, famous body surgery artist. But then when you see him do one of his performances, then there's like 20 people here. Yeah. Like, how are you famous if no one's coming to your... I had story times at the bookstore that had more people than your... Live sex surgery. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, so I don't know how he's supposed to be famous. And and that's about the plot. There's a guy eating chocolate bars, or at least what looks like chocolate bars. Uh, somebody else steals it and grabs a bite and dies. Uh... Turns out he's that kid. He's the plastic eating kid's father, yeah. and now it it's by the mother. now it's all about how we have to evolve to catch up to our technological selves, so that but... we would we would eat the byproducts of our technologies, such as plastics. So there's like a a group of people who are trying to evolve to eat plastic and for whatever reason the government hates that and oh if you can eat plastic you're not a human. And it's like wait a second. So the people who can magically create new organs are humans, but the people who eat plastic are evil freaks? <laughs> That's like the pot calling the kettle a pot. Yes. Yes. So this guy Aragon. talks to Vigo Mortensen oh, yeah. about doing a performance piece which would be an autopsy on his son that his mother smothered to death with a pillow after reading a plastic bucket. Yeah, and and if I if I got this right. But but stop here a second. No, stop here a second. If not for this movie, I would never, ever have uttered a line like that 
in my life. And I think I'm better for it. True. Uh, So I think you, I still think you're being too harsh on this movie. It's, it's a, it's a great idea. It's a great concept. It's just freaking boring as hell. Okay. So here are some of the problems that I have with this film. Uh, I don't know what this movie was or what it was trying to say. Aragon whispers the entire movie. He didn't yeah. speak in a normal volume throughout the entire film, so I only understood about 50% of what he said. It's hard to understand the dialogue. Everyone has a different accent, and the settings, it looks like Zion right after the sweaty dance orgy. And it, it's a few shocking parts of like uh, a guy who's all ears and uh, live organ transplants. Yes. But in between that are a bunch of people saying things I can barely understand. Yes. And like I just don't care. Well, again, like Kristen Stewart, I, I, I was really kind of appreciating her performance, but I never understood a fucking thing she was saying. Mm-hmm. I can't. I I can't even understand the Americans in this film. Yeah. Let alone all of the freaking. I I I just had the the hardest time with this, but I will say, okay, just the general idea and plot and art surgeries and growing limbs and a group of radical evolutionists who are trying to eat plastic and they have a dead body they're going to autopsy okay yeah all of that sounds great it didn't look great because it was just it was just boring as hell and i didn't like it I, I don't have time for pretentious crap about futuristic surgical sex and plastic eating. And is all that surgery like covered under their health insurance? Great question. Great question. I mean, that's not even mentioned. Or can they just afford it because they're rich artists? The, see, the thing is, is that if you replace the surgery anything else it like like uh oh in in the future people will get sexual gratification from rubbing potatoes together i have no idea where i was going i am pretty high right now I don't know, but I am interested. Just be I am honest. interested in that. Now just picture that. Picture people rubbing potatoes together. Yeah. That that feels more like the nineteen seventies crimes of the future. As if this was was the most orgasmic spe- experience they've yeah. ever had yeah. in their life. So I feel that this movie was just shocking for shocking's sake. And I would imagine that some potatoes would be hotter than, like, you know, like, fuck Idaho, you know? Right. It's Maine, bitch. You know? I get I get all of my potatoes from Bombay, India. <laughs> oh, why don't you get your potatoes from Idaho? Ten well, sure, warning. if you want to do it the easy way. Yeah. Uh, 10 minute warning. Uh, Cronenberg wrote the script for this movie 20 years ago, but he, but then he gave up on making the film and then he found the script again and he made the film. He didn't bother to rewrite it. Not one word. Okay. And, uh, I'm sorry. He Maybe he should have taken that. another pass at the script is yeah. all I'm saying. Uh, <clears throat> there were rumors when this movie premiered at Cannes, rumors of people walking out, people disgusted, but like, this movie isn't disgusting. It's it's worse than that. It's just a bit dull and kind of pretentious. 
<laughs> and I didn't I didn't particularly like it. And I yeah, could, uh, I, I I would like to find out a bit more, and I could see myself watching it another couple of times or two to try to find out what people are saying and what the hell is really going on here. I'm I'm kind of intrigued. Yeah. Hmm. Well, uh, I feel like I would have loved this movie if I were in my twenties. Yeah. Because at that point in time, I was seeking out indie films and foreign films and going driving like an hour and a half to go see some bizarre art film that's only playing in some small theater in Scottsdale somewhere. So but I'm in my 40s now. I don't have time for surgical sex and plastic eating. I just don't (laughs) want to be entertained when I see a movie. And it just it wasn't entertaining. I found the, the premise to be intriguing, but. Yeah. It's done awkward and kind of boring. One thing that I did like is that the people are growing new organs in the future and because they have a sickness called accelerated evolution system syndrome or a ease. <laughs> so the concept is interesting and intriguing on paper, but in reality, I just didn't care. But fascinating to have a director just recycle a title like this. I don't know why he would do this. That's the only reason I could think of it. I could just think that it was just a publicity stunt. Yeah. That's the only thing that I can think of. Um, Why don't you do publicity stunts the normal way and have uh, Chris Pine spit on people and get the May Queen all pissed off? I mean, also also maybe... Maybe he thought, like, well, you know, maybe I can get away with it. I mean, who knows about the first crimes of the future? That's probably it. Yeah. If anything, he's going to get people to go and watch the weird foot fetish uh, child raping movie from 1970. (laughs) Uh, So that's all I've got this week for this week's film. We've got six minutes. We can do this. I believe in us. Bonnie, what are we doing next week? Okay. We are taking a hard left turn to lighten things up a bit, because, you know, these movies were both pretty heavy, and we just did the whole fucking coronavirus thing. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that you had said it, but next time's movie, American Graffiti. It is already on the cough cough. I am so excited about this because I believe that I have watched it a couple of times when I was younger on TV. It felt like once a month it was on TV some Saturday or some Sunday on TV all of the time. So I believe that I've seen it before, but I couldn't tell you when the last time was that I actually sat down and watched it. I think I was a very young child. I don't think I've seen it since then, and I've only seen the heavily edited television version. I'm excited to see this film. I, 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 I'm a fan. I'm a fan and of it'll, this film. And it'll and, be a nice change of pace from the last two episodes. <laughs> and it gives us an opportunity to trash George Lucas Without having to watch another Star Wars movie. Ah, yes. Thank you. Very much. So it's like a a back door to some good old-fashioned George Lucas hate. Heck yeah. Oh, that will be fun. I believe this movie was made back in the before times in the long, long ago when he had a neck. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Before he became... No neck, Joe. <laughs> so that's going to be next week. We're going to be watching American Graffiti. That's going to be fun. But now that I'm looking back at this week, the highs and the lows, uh, Kristen Stewart, the diarist, the uh, diarist, Joe Biden being as old as Casablanca. I got to say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. Yes. Okay, good. I was hoping you'd say that because I, I, I felt the same way. 
but I didn't want to say anything because I feel like you're the person who makes that distinction and not me. And so, but yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And on behalf of Mal and Eleanor and Maxwell and my wife, Natasha, who really helped out in the monologue, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you douche waffles and poopy sets. And you loot llamas. And you booty. And you booty? Man, okay. Okay. Do 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 do. This is the Johnny Carson theme. Do 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 do. Skitty papa do wow. Cut and print. And put it on a cookie. We lost the microphone.